What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Common Country. This is episode number 29. We start today just off with a scouting update and an academy update coming on the back of that absolutely excruciatingly painful 4-3 loss to Blackburn Rovers with their winner coming in stoppage time. Heading into today's episode, we do have the scouting update. As you can see, I put one player in my academy and you'll see he's right at the end of this list. And he's so good, they named him twice. Lloyd... Lloyd, 65, 87 overall already at just 17 years old with 74, 94 potential and a 3.3 mil valuation. Yeah, as soon as I saw him, I was like, okay, he's getting an academy scholarship straight away. I don't need any more scouting. So yeah, Lloyd Lloyd, 71 overall uh, rated uh, right mid slash left mid. Great stats already technically as well. 85 dribbling, 80, 81 ball control, I think it is, or possibly the other way around. But even so, 71 overall, 74, 94 potential. And again, 17 years old, I couldn't wait. I thought, put him straight in the first team, see how good he is. But I was a little disappointed, to be fair. He only shows great potential. 71 overall, just 17 years old. But again, showing great potential. Now, don't get me wrong, again, very very agile, 82 agility, 84, 85 ball control, 81 dribbling, four-star weak foot. You know, he's, he's good. He's really good coming out of the academy. But it's not his current ability that concerns me. It's the lack of potential, as you see, I fixed in November 4 games coming all today. The Baggies, Barnsley, Sunderland away and also Stoke away as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised about this. It's Rishesha. Rishesha gets his first call up as Webb is going to go to Real Sociedad B in January. But Rishesha and Gavin Humphreys get their first Wales call up. We know Humphreys is the future of Wales, but Rishesha getting a call up has, has made me so happy. Since we brought him in in the first episode, I said I, I love this guy to pieces. He's nailed down a first choice wing back role. He's so good, man. He's so underrated in the scene. So him getting a call up makes me so happy. Along with Humphreys getting his first call up as well but the question is when am I going to get the Wales job when is it going to be offered to me man come on I want to manage internationally with all the young Welsh talent we got but yeah you know obviously 71 uh, overall but only showing great potential that's really surprising that means maximum he should only be growing like 13 or 14 ratings but a 17 you'd expect more potential than that but even so just one of those things with dynamic potential I guess it could increase over time but yeah still first game of today's episode on the back of the heartbreaking 4-3 loss to Blackburn Rose Leewood Park returning to Rodney Parade finally picks up our first win at home against Peterborough United in the last episode well what a way to start this game so early on into the match how would you mark your first Wales call up how about scoring your third goal of the season Gavin Humphreys the future of Wales he's a little lad he's only five foot seven but he's got desire three minutes into the game gets goal number three for the season and our number 10 gets us off and underway against the baggies Newport County won West West Bromwich Albion nil and a chance to make it 2 19 minutes in, which he almost did. Great save to near post there as we still led by one. But really fast start from Newport County, and it was a really great opening half an hour as well. These are one this is one of those games of FIFA where it's just really, really fun to play. But we would see an injury 29 minutes in for Allen bound we've lost davis to the broken toe and our bound goes down and stays down as well thankfully he would soldier on but it never shrugged the injury off and 35 minutes in in what was a brilliant first half here against west Bromwich albion carlin grant finds grady dean Ganner. quick little touch to get away from pain and a brilliant finish as well as dean Ganner levels it for the baggies and it's 1-1 but it was just such a fun first half did you know those games are few that are just so fun to play even if you're not winning even if you're not dominating, you're just really enjoying playing it. This is one of those games. Five minutes to go for the break. Carlin Grant denied by a great save by Price. It was still 1-1. It was just such an open first half. I knew there'd be more chances. I knew there'd be more goals. And right before the break, we would find our leveller. Ruben Colwell heading into Gavin Humphreys' corner, making it 2-1. And Newport County are back in front. In the second half, after a really open first half, the game died down a little bit. It sort of ran out of steam. With 15 minutes to go, still leading by one. Sam Pearson receives the ball, rolls it through to Rashesha, beats his man Reach, gets through, can he finish? Yes he can, smacks it in and talk about marking your first international call ups in style. Humphreys gets a goal and Rashesha gets one as well, how cool is that to see them celebrate together as well. They're going to the Wales squad and they've both scored in this game, 3-1 Newport County. Out of eight minutes to go as Sam Pearson off the bench is sent down the right by Matondo. Goalkeeper comes out. Bad decision because who's ghosting in at the back stick? It's Gavin Humphreys, the future of Wales, who turns in from close range. His fourth of the year. 
and I can't believe it. What a scoreline. What a win. Best of the season so far. Newport County 4, West Bromwich Albion 1, and I was fist pumping like crazy coming to find a whistle because we waited so long for our first home win and then back to back victories at Rodney Parade. First against the Posh and now against the Bags for Humphreys. Two goals and an assist. I don't know what took him so long to get a call up to the senior Welsh squad, but even so, this guy is the future of Wales and he's the future of club and country. 16 years old, up to 72 overall. Four goals and three assists, averaging a 7.2 in the first 15 games in the Championship. He's developing so, so well. But the bad news was that we got another broken toe for another striker. First Isaac Davis going down and poor Alan Bauman. Seriously, he'd really started to turn a corner after a tough beginning to the season. He now got two goals and four assists in his opening 11 games of the Championship. Finally starting to find his feet in the second tier. And now he's done until December time, December, January time. Absolutely gutting. So I think what I'm going to do is play Ravi Matondo as striker. Now, we could have Collins as striker. I could even try Gavin Humphreys as a false nine. But I think with Matondo's start to the season, already four goals since coming in on transfer deadline day, I think I'm going to utilise that pace and play him as a striker. Lloyd Lloyd, out of the academy, so good they named him twice. He's going to start on the wing, but Matondo, oh, he's going to become a striker in this team in the absence of Davis. Now, whether this is his long-term position or not, I'm not too sure, but he's shown us he can score goals. I prefer him on the wing, but if he can play through the middle and fill in the gap whilst Davis and Bound are both down, it might prove to be a blessing in disguise because Matondo is such a pure goal scorer. He scores there, he makes it 1-0, we're in front against Barnsley, and wouldn't you just know it, in a really poor game, where Price made a great save, the only chance Barnsley got, I can't believe it. First time all season long, we've got back-to-back -back wins. But more importantly than that, three straight wins at Rodney Parade, all oh, season long, we hadn't won a single home game since the campaign began. And out of nowhere, we won three on the trot. Absolutely bizarre turn of form and change of fortunes in South Wales. Still, following that, Sunderland away stadium alike. Cracking team to do an RTG career mode with in this year's FIFA. They've got the real stadium, the really strong rivalry with Newcastle United. If you are looking for an English RTG this year, I definitely do recommend Sunderland. Great, great team to use. They took lead very early onto the game as well. And unlike in the previous couple of games, I just didn't have the confidence. Maybe because we we're away from home. I've got the worst away record in the division. Maybe something to do with that. We were down by a goal. Matondo had our best chance, but a great save kept to the 1-0. However, with 22 minutes to go, we might not have had the most amazing of starts of the season, but we are starting to pick it up a little bit. Sam Pearson's third of the year makes it 1-1, and we're back on level two to the northeast, and a chance to make it three straight wins with 13 minutes to go. Oh, and we almost did it as well. A scramble from a corner. Saw the ball drop out of the sky to Dylan Reese. Goalkeeper caught in no man's land. I just couldn't bend it in between the posts. Final score, 1-1 one, though, one, and three straight games without a loss in November, which meant heading to our final game of today's episode, Stoke City away. If we could avoid defeat in this... It'll be our longest unbeaten run of the season at four, which is quite embarrassing to say it, but even so, but also an unbeaten calendar month of November. So let's just say the motivation was there. Stoke away from home, two wins away all season long, but desperate to get another win here. 23 minutes into the game. Oh, almost at Lee. Ken Campbell firing just wide as it was still goals. But 28 minutes in, really bright start to the game. Attacking Stoke in the early, early minutes. Looking for those chances. Ravi Matondo trying his luck. His shot block. But then Davis drills one in for his first of this season. And we had the lead on Stoke City. And I just... I just I just love this. Ben Davis running all the way to celebrate with me as we go a goal up. And, you know, I've mentioned it before, like, long shots in this FIFA. Guys, honestly, if you're, if you're struggling to get inside and you're struggling to break the AI down, my number one tip, just let fly. Just have a go because goalkeepers in this year's FIFA, don't ask me why, but they're just really poor at dealing with long range strikes and the accuracy is really high as well. It's, it goes both ways, both scoring and conceding, of course, but even so, Newport in front, 
Ben's first in the championship and we lead at Stoke City as he tried to find a level with five minutes to go. Great save by Price, keeps it at 1-0 as we're still in front. I've got to say as well, he is really turning into a very good shot stopper between the sticks of 17 years old. So Stoke City 0, Newport County 1 and right for half time a chance to make it 2, which we would do. Matondo offloads to Kem Campbell and the former Wolves midfielder released in the summer comes to Rodney Parade, bangs in our second, his first in the championship and second overall this season. And there it is, what a run for Newport County. Three wins in our last four games, no losses in these last four, 10 points picked up from 12, and an unbeaten run in the whole month of November. We had a shocking start to the season, we were only just above the drop, but our best run of form sees us jump into the top 10 and gain some separation on the bottom three. Very pleased to see it, but there's an awful long way to go, and in a competitive division like this one, we're taking nothing for granted. That words is the Common Country guys big thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it if you had please drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and i will see you for the next episode of club and country very soon